that right there, YouTube, is a zebra neurite snail. Been wanting to show y'all that snail for quite a while now, and I finally called him out in the open where I could get a video of him. And I was going to show you the tiger neurite as well, but for some reason he has uh, eluded me again. But, um, you know, I, I think snails are really important inside planted tanks, guys. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about it a little bit inside today's video. Uh, so stay tuned, take a look at this, we'll be right back. What's up, YouTube? Hefe coming to you, Captain Awesome's Fish Room, Jeff Acromus Brovide, bringing y'all a pretty cool video today. I'm, 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 I'm pretty excited about today's video, excuse me. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about planted tanks and a few things that I think are important things to have inside of a planted tank. And, you know, they may surprise you. I mean, some people may consider these things pests or, uh, you know, consider them as something that will damage your plants and stuff like that. And, you know, there are some that will do that, but there are also some that are beneficial to the planet tank. So, with that said, and from what you saw in the beginning of this video, let's go ahead and jump into today's video, take a look at it, talk about it, that way y'all can tell me what y'all think. So, make sure you drop a comment below, let me know what y'all think about it, if y'all want to talk about it or something that I failed to mention, let me know about it guys. Hit that like button, make sure you subscribe so you get updates whenever I upload a video. Here we go. All right guys, so here we are, and we're looking at the Planet Tank, the 50 long subscriber Planet Tank. Uh, doing well, uh, I started dosing new algae on this tank, and I have to say I was very, very surprised at the results that I'm getting. I'm just, I just did the second dose uh, about three days ago, so I'll be doing my third dose tomorrow, and look at the rocks, guys. Look at the rocks. Almost completely free of that nasty, stringy algae outbreak I had in here because I dropped the light too low. Uh, so, pretty awesome stuff. I, I have to say, I, was, I mean, I'm definitely surprised at how it's working. You can see some of it's still lingering around right there, but... Uh, all in all, I'm really digging this new algae product. Awesome stuff. Uh, it didn't, you know, do much on Caesar's tank over here, but, uh, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily something that's going to work in every application, you know. And that's what I tried to portray inside my review video on that, that I think it is an awesome product. It just, it has its place, and I definitely think the new algae has a strong place in the planted tank aquarium hobby. Okay, so with that said, uh, we're going to move on into uh, what today's video is going to be about, which is, from what you've seen already, snails. I think they are a asset to any planted tank. And you know, sometimes, guys, a lot of people consider snails as pests, okay? Uh, like your Malaysian trumpet snails or your um, uh, ram's horn snails. Sorry, that name keeps slipping my mind for some reason. Some people consider those snails as pests, but I'll tell you what, guys. Those Malaysian trumpet snails, okay, I have them inside of this aquarium. Okay, I have them in here. Do you see them anywhere? No. Because what they do during the day is they dig down into your substrate and then keep it nice and churned up and aerated, okay, uh, without destroying root systems on your plants, okay? 
Uh, the ram's horn snails, same thing. They burrow down into the substrate as well. Neurite snails, uh, they'll burrow a little bit. They stay mostly on the top layer of your substrate. They'll dig down maybe about an inch and that's it. But uh, those other two snails that I just mentioned, the ram's horn and the Malaysian trumpet snails, most people consider those snails as pests. Um, some even, you know, and I'm not saying that ram's horns don't eat plants, but I'll tell you what. Uh, if you're if you're providing a planted tank that's well balanced, okay, and you know you don't have an overpopulation of snails, then you know you won't experience too much of uh, snails wrecking havoc on your plants, okay. And what I mean by that is creating a natural food chain, creating an ecosystem, okay. In any ecosystem, there's always a food chain. There's a bottom of a food chain, and then there's a top of a food chain, and then there's a transference of the top of the food chain to go into a whole nother food chain, like uh, fish that eat smaller fish, and those fish eat smaller fish, and those fish eat benefic organisms and stuff like that. Well, there's also other ecosystems like birds that will swoop down and eat those same fish, uh, but that's a whole nother video, guys. That's also a really long discussion video as well. But uh, creating a natural eco... Well, no, I'm not going to say natural, but uh, an aquatic ecosystem inside of an aquarium, if you create something like that where there's something to keep that population in check, okay? Like these pea puffers, for example, or loaches, for example, okay? You keep the population in check, and the population won't overrun your system, okay? You can keep uh, assassin snails, okay? I have about five, uh, five assassin snails in here, probably more by now because they probably bred, but you can see that I still have neurite snails, okay? There's my zebra neurite. I've been wanting to show them to you for a long time. Y'all saw them inside the beginning of today's video. Uh, but I still have neurite snails. Now, is that to say that assassin snails won't take out a neurite? Absolutely not, guys. Those snails eat other snails. That's their job. Okay, but creating a natural ecosystem, if you put another snail in there that reproduces more prolifically, like your Malaysian trumpet snails or your uh, ram's horn snails, the likelihood of your assassins going after your neurites is lesson, okay? But then you also have these other creatures, like these pea puffers that will keep your snail population in check, okay? Now, what's, I mean, and then you have shrimp as well. Shrimp will actually eat snails, guys. There's videos on YouTube of shrimp attacking snails and eating them and killing them and stuff. So, then you have a shrimp, okay? Then you have a shrimp, shrimp population, now a lot of people wouldn't consider a shrimp population to be over to or to be able to be overrun, uh, but if you're trying to keep a balanced system, uh, there's always a population limit on a specific animal. Okay, so shrimp included, guys. So if you get overrun with shrimp, well, what do you have to take care of? You know, some of the shrimp population. Well. You have other little fish in there that'll eat shrimp, baby shrimp, of course. Uh, Cory cats, I have those in here. Those will eat some shrimp. Those puffers, they'll eat some baby shrimp if they can catch them. I mean, they're hunting, they're hunting whatever they can eat all day, whatever they want to eat all day. If they find a baby shrimp, I don't care if they eat it. You know why? Because I started off my population with enough to sustain that population, but still be able to... Uh, give a natural food source to some other fish that I have in here. Guys, y'all wouldn't believe me if I told you how often I feed this tank, okay? I feed this tank maybe once or twice a week and none of the fish in here, okay? I haven't fed this tank in a few days and you see how fat those quarry cats are back there? They're eating, guys. They are eating, okay? You see these fish right here walk, I mean, these rasboras, the phoenix rasboras, Check them out. They're fat too. What are they eating? Well, they're eating benefic organisms like your 
uh, the small microscopic organisms that will live on the algae. They're eating some of the algae. Uh, the snails, of course, are keeping my algae in check. Some of my snails are keeping other snails in check. Okay? And then you have some of these fish. You know, if they see like a snail egg on the glass or something, I'm sure they'll pick it off. Right? So, <clears throat> snails are important, guys. You know, I mean, if you're trying to set up a system, if you just don't like snails, I'm not saying you have to have snails to have a healthy system. Okay? Because you can look at my system and see that it's out of balance right now. Okay? I have algae. But, <clears throat> we all go through our trials and tribulations inside the hobby. And it had been a while since I've set up a planted tank, so of course, I got overzealous, I dropped the light, and I created an algae outbreak because everything wasn't balanced, okay? So, I'm dealing with the algae. New algae is definitely helping with it. You can see on the rocks, like I showed, mentioned earlier, that it's just, I mean, it's booming, okay? Uh, dwarf baby tears still have little tufts of algae in there, uh, and you can see that it, as it goes down the line, it's less and less. Uh, but yeah guys, uh, like I said, you know, today's video was about snails. I, I keep getting off on other tangents, but you know, it's fun to talk about and fun to think about. You know, uh, you know, creating an ecosystem that can sustain itself as long as you provide it with water changes. I mean, that's awesome. I would love to get to the point to where I don't have to feed this tank. I think that would be just an awesome marvel to look at. Uh, so... With that said, uh, snails, guys, I think they're important to any planted tank. They can be an asset to any planted tank. Uh, for one, they'll churn up your substrate and keep it aerated for your plants. Uh, keep those roots nice and healthy. Plus, they'll munch on the dead plant matter under and on top of the substrate. So that's a bonus right there. Uh, so it'll actually, you know, keep your, keep your substrate well churned, uh, well aerated, and cleaner. Uh, than not having snails. Now, of course, your your uh, your water changes are going to help there and stuff like that. But uh, snails, guys, definitely. Uh, some people consider them pests. I think they're assets. I think they're great additions to a planted tank. So, with that said, guys, make sure you go and check out Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook. Make sure you like that page. Uh, we also have a classifieds page that you can check out where you can put some of your used stuff up for sale or fish up for sale whatever you got you can put it up for sale pretty cool stuff uh, so make sure you go check those out 